you see here we are talking about the reverberation now and uh, the reverberation has a couple uh, stages the build up that we talked about a steady state where it stays pretty much the same and then there is a decay time and this leads us to the definition of reverberation time that we can see in the graph on the right where it drops by 60 dB so this leads us to the definition of reverberation time that we see now this is a very good definition taken from the Tom Meister book and the reverberation time or RT60 is defined as the time which elapses after the sound source has ceased until the sound level has dropped by 60 dB. This is just a reminder that uh, the sound waves travel as spheres in a spherical uh, configuration. So that's why when, when you double the distance, the intensity is dropped by half. Because the area, when we double the distance, according to that formula in there, is actually four times, right? It's, 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 a, it's a function of r uh, to the square. So what happens is when we double the distance, the area is four times larger. The effects of reverberation are very clear in music when there are pauses rests like in this particular scoring there and then when we have this particular rest then we can actually feel all of that um, a reverberation of the room and have an impression of the uh, ambience and the place the location that the instrument is in this graph gives us a general idea of the favorable reverberation times for various types of rooms and the usages of those rooms. So we have the pop music, conference room, opera houses, and concert halls, and all that. And uh, of course, the volume in the bottom and the vibration times in the uh, vertical dimension. So we can compare those two and see how it goes in terms of the ones that are favorable for those styles. Aside from the average reverberation uh, time, the frequency dependent nature of the reverberation times is uh, its most important attribute. Uh, frequency dependent behavior stems from the fact that the absorption of walls, ceiling and floor are nearly always frequency dependent. Now this is the most important concept that I'm discussing here in this video. Is, this concept is called the reverberation, reverberation radius or also sometimes called critical distance here in America. It's, uh, in reverberation radius is more common in Europe and critical distance uh, is more common here, although it's the same thing. So we see in this graph that the direct sound decays, right? So we know that uh, uh, according to the distance, you, the, the farther you are, the softer the sound, of course. But the reverberation, the diffuse sound, is actually more or less the same everywhere in the room. That's what the dotted line in the middle. So in the beginning, the reverberation, or in the beginning, you know, in the, the uh, closest to the um, uh, sound source, the sound level of the direct sound is higher than the reverberation. And further away, we have the direct sound very soft, and the reverberation, the diffuse, is louder. So there is one point in the room or one certain distance which is a radius right because it's a circle if you are around a particular instrument or sound source that the two sounds the two levels the direct sound and the diffuse sound are at exactly the same level this is called the vibration radius and this is extremely important for us to know in a particular room because it will change everything how we mic the instruments. If we want a sound that is more direct, we, we go inside the vibration radius. If we want more diffuse sound, we go outside. We can be exactly at that distance. We can put two microphones. It's an extremely important um, uh, concept for us to know and be aware of when we are in a particular room. This figure shows us the typical relationship between direct and diffuse sound for small and large, dry and reverberant rooms for a given microphone distance. Finally, we have 
this graph that shows us the um, reverberation radius as a function of the microphone directional characteristic. What does this mean? Well, it means that if we measure or if we listen, if we walk around a room and we find where the critical distance is, or we can measure it, there's a mathematical formula that we can calculate that. Uh, that critical distance will work for a nominee microphone. So you can see there the nominee is at 1, which is the exact critical distance. But let's say that you are using a cardioid microphone. If you want to have the same effect, you cannot put the microphone at the critical distance. You need to put the microphone at 1.7 of that distance. Because it's a cardioid, it's a directional microphone, it's not a nominee anymore. And the same thing for the other ones. You can see all the other types of microphones in there. Figure 8 is more or less the same as the cardioid, but if you have anything that is like a supercardioid, hypercardioid, or shotgun, you have to go farther away, increase the reverberation radius by that factor. 